So by now we've all heard of the Bark ship. And yesterday I made a Bark build, but the Bark build I made was off of a website called thehelm.gg. And massive shout out to them and Skull and Bone Loadouts for having a website where you can actually put together custom builds to see what they look like in terms of stats and everything before you actually go ahead and equip all the items and purchase them. But in today's video, I'm going to be making a Bark build, but it's going to be prioritizing the healing. Now, and there's also going to be two small changes that you're going to be able to make or have to make if you want to be fully supported. Pimp Slap Rosu, welcome to the Death Squad Amigo. Appreciate that follow over on YouTube. If you follow me while I make a video, I'll make sure I give you a shout out. Anyway, so yeah, let's uh, jump into this build and it's going to be mainly focused on healing, like I said. But it's got some other weapons, so if you are being hunted down and attacked, you can still help out the team and get involved in the fight. So let's go to the ship. So initially the ship that we're using is the Bark, it's the new one. And it's obviously a support uh, type which is specialised in aiding friendly ships. The support excels in providing assists that can help turn the tide of the battle. Its perks are revitalised, so it restores 0.5% of severe damage and 0.5% of whole health per second, as well as for nearby friendly ships. So as long as we're with friendly ships, now I don't know if this only counts to the ones that are in your group, or if it counts to the ones that are in the same event of you. So let's just say we're doing a La Peste. And while doing the La Peste, there's so many people in that, that um, event, Will it heal all of, the, all of them? Now, we won't know until tonight, because tonight I'm going to be live on twitch.tv forward slash iDeathShide. It is a free, so make sure you go down to the links in the description below and uh, come over to the Twitch, because we're going to probably do a La Peste, and I'm going to be testing out this bad boy. I might turn it into a full healer, but as of right now, I've got it as a semi-healer, because I'm wanting to use it, sail around, and it does still really support the team, and the ship type is support. It's not healer, so it's not fully about healing it's about aiding with the weapons i've used on the side of this ship it definitely supports and it definitely aids so yeah as you can see as well it restores 15 percent of stamina and 10 percent of severe damage and 60 percent more whole health on a friendly ship while using a repair weapon so we don't need the major repair weapons just by using this alone it's already going to be doing huge amounts now it doesn't have much health, whole health it has 36,000, which is not massive and it doesn't have much brace strength. It does have a really good speed, so it's good. And it's got a very good acceleration. So it's very good at dodging uh, AoEs, which are areas of effect. Um, and it can kind of get out of them quite easy. Being La Peste, when he puts down his poison, you could dip. So this is going to be a build that we're probably going to need for the end of the season. As they have mentioned, that it's going to get difficult. So this is a kind of support ship I think we're all going to need to put our hands on. Uh, to be able to help out with the end season event. So I'm putting this together so we've got that. So let's go into the weapons. To start off with the weapons. For the front weapons I'm using the repair bombards. So as you know it's in the title. It repairs and it's a bombard. So it's typically like your fire bombards or anything like that. But it repairs and it repairs for quite a lot of amount of health. If you think it repairs for 4,680 each bombard. That is huge alone. Put into consideration it's got 60% more from just using this ship. So we get an additional, what, 2,200, 2,300, let's say, on top of that. So every single shot is going to be healing almost 7,000 damage. Massive. Then, obviously, the reload's like normal. The range is quite good. And it's got a, quite a, a big blast radius. So it, I don't know how it works if you can only heal one shot ship or if it heals everyone that's in the area of effect. Because if it does heal multiple, then all you need to do is get people to stack up, have a couple of these on board, and no one will be able to die. You could just anchor up against the the La Peste, and we'll just keep healing, and Bob's your uncle, everyone's happy. So the second weapons I'm using are the interesting ones. So the second weapons, I've been through all the weapons, and I thought, what ones can I go ahead and put on the sides? Where I can still obviously defend myself slightly, but I can also use them to support the team. And that's where I come down to using the basilisk freeze the reason i use the basilisk freeze is simply because obviously they've got a decent amount of damage they've got a very good range because the last thing we want to be doing is putting ourselves really close to the enemy ships because we want to stay alive because if we're not alive people are missing out on vital heals so we want to stay alive so we want to try and use the bombards for the range and the basilisk for the range now 
the reason I've chosen the Basilisk, I've gone through all the weapons, but these are actually going to support the team the most for killing a boss. Because the perk they've got on, on them is the Raider perk. Now, it increases charge rate of the vulnerable effect by 50%. Now, I do understand that there is other cannons that have got the Raider effect. Like, let's go down and we can see that the other ones that got the Raider, Raider effect are the Zam Zammers. But the Zam Zammers, you've only got a 250 meter range. So, yet again, we don't want to be getting peppered, but we still want to be able to put the Raider perk and increase that charge rate. So, our team that are close, whether they've got the Scrapper Station, where they're getting 8,000 health back from using a charge attack, or simply they just want to dish out even more damage, the Raider perk is not only going to put damage on the enemy, it's not only going to keep us away from the fight, it's also going to increase that crew attack for people to be able to heal even more and... To deal even more damage at a time. It's got piercing 2 on as well. So it adds 20% of damage. Piercing damage. Increased damage to weak points by 70%. Which is really good. Because yet again it's going to help you take out them enemy ships. But your main focus on this obviously is going to be the healing. This is just so you can put out crew attacks. And uh, get other people healed. And it's something that's on the side. And this, this uh, ship on the side has got all deck weapons of 7 as well. So it's got quite a lot of all deck weapons. And then you want to be going. Just doing like a giant spin in a circle. So you want to spin, hit the repair, repair bombards, spin, hit all the basilisk shots, and then you're going to spin, hit the more repairs, and then you're going to spin, hit the basilisk. So you're just going to go in a complete 360 and just do that rotation. If you can keep doing that rotation, then you're going to keep the heals, the damage, the heals, the damage, the heals, the damage, with zero time of not shooting your weapon. Now, for the auxiliary, obviously we had to go for the repair mortar free, because this heals... 18,720 if you hit a friendly ship. But we've got to add 60% on top of this. So not only are we getting an additional 9,000 for being 50%, we're getting the 60%. So we're, we're getting effectively another 10,000. We can heal with this repair mortar from this ship over, well, almost, let's just say 30,000 health from just one mortar cannon. Most ships in this game so let's just say most people in the Brigantine, because they like the Brigantine, I wouldn't, I would choose the Snow. But let's just say they're in the Brigantine, you're going to be healing them up almost to full with one shot. Um, and they won't, people won't even have to use repair kits at this point. It's, it's, it's really good. And it's got a very good blast radius. Now, moving on to the armor. The armor I'm a bit confused with. So, realistically, I want to be using the Ouroboros, but the Ouroboros isn't out. If I'm going against the Lapest, I don't want to be using the Wraithful Ward. I want to be using the Wailing Ward, which is currently found in the uh, Smuggler's Pass. So, if I go here and go over to the Smuggler's Pass, you will find it... Oh into rewards and you will go down to the ship master and you go all the way along to number 20 and that is where you will find the whaling ward armor so the whaling ward armor what it does is i don't know if i can see the details well it basically reduces toxic damage by 50 percent and it also helps you uh use 40% less bracing when you first brace and in order to unlock the ship as well while I'm here I might as well say that you just all you got to do is get a smuggler pass to level 45 and the way you get to 45 so I might explain this because someone did ask in the comments you don't get the points then put it here no you have to invest the points down here in order to get the completion up you can't invest points into the completion you invest it to these three tabs below and then that will count towards a completion and then you unlock the bark um so going back to the build manage ship, we've got to go over the furniture. So yes, once we've got it, I probably want the Ouroboros. I don't actually want the Black Prince if I'm doing uh, this current season. I want to be using the Wailing Ward. Um, but not this one, the Wailing one, because this one's only puts poison around you when you brace. And because we're going to be out of combat, we don't want that. So right now, I'm going to be using the Black Prince. I could use a Royal Custodian. So it's completely personal preference. I like this because it's got reduced damage taken by 50% when a whole health, is, health, whole health is less than 33%. And because our um, passive, which is we heal up 0.5% uh, each second, so 5% every 10 seconds, um, we, as long as we can take more uh, damage, then we're still going to be keeping the health quite high. And you put a couple of repair kits on. You know that the gist. It's, it's just a good lifeline to have at the end. So going on to furniture, I'm using the scoping station. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking, why are you using the scoping station? And why aren't you using 
the first aid station. Because the first aid station increases the repair amount of repair weapons by 30%. So pairing that up with the other one, we've got 60%, we've got 90%. But it only do works for ships that are less than 33% of whole health. Now, do you want to be struggling and high focusing those that are obviously at 33%? Or you just want to just keep the heals going and keep them at full health all the time. Personally, I'd like to keep them at full health all the time. I don't want to be focusing on those at 33%. If I can keep them all above 33%, I'm happy. Because then they're not on their last lifeline. So, unless they all have black prints, then this would make sense. But in my case, I'm using the scoping station. Because I'm going to be further than 320 meters. Because I'm going to be sitting on the edge of the battle. Healing and dealing the crew attack damage. I'm going to be hitting a target for more than 320 meters away. And it applies a marked status. Which targets with the mark status take 100% more damage to weak points. So if we've got a load of ships close. And they're hitting the weak points of the La Pest, They're going to be dealing 100% more damage. So not only would they be doing their 2,000. Now they'd be doing 4,000. We'd be taking these bosses out even quicker. And it's focused mainly for that reason. Now if you... Did want to do it? Yeah, again, the only one I'd switch to would be the first aid station. Otherwise, you can have more healing for yourself. Or you could reduce the damage taken. But this build, you're going to be healing uh, yourself with. So you don't want the scrapper station. You want others to have the scrapper station. So when they're close, they can do that. The second third slot, slot, we've got the joinery workshop. One increases repair amount from repair weapons by 10%. So not only have we got the 60%, now we've got 70% increased repair. Bumps it up massively. 10% is huge. That is one that is a must as furniture. Moving down to the third, increase maximum stamina by 7%. So the only reason I want maximum stamina because if I need to move out the way, if I need to brace, anything like that purely, that's going to be really helpful for me just to move maneuver around a little bit more and help the team a little bit more. Now, third, fourth, sorry, uh, we've got the Bombard Powerhouse, which increases area of effect radius of the Bombard by 10%. Just so we don't have to worry too much about hitting them in the small target. It just gives that extra 10% of flexibility to be able to hit them and heal them. And potentially hit multiples to heal them up more. And for the last one, we've got Spiked Warhorn. So that increases charge rate of crew attacks by 10%. So yet again, those who are close that are using the Scrapper Station or simply want to put in more damage, having the Spiked Warhorn on is just going to help the team so much more. So this is not only a healing build, a self-sustaining build. It's also a support build. And I would probably go to say that this, along with other team members, is probably the best support build in the game. Now, do let me know in the comments down below if you do think I'm wrong there. Because I would really, really like to know why and how you would change it. Because we're all learning. The game hasn't been out that long. I want to know the best methods. You want to know the best me methods. So together, we can all learn the best methods and help each other to succeed. And as a community, you guys are fantastic. This build is going to be used tonight, as I mentioned. So I'm going to be over on Twitch. I never decided it is free. We've got a Discord with over 550 people. It's growing about 100 people a day down in the uh, description down below. And we've also got a giveaway on there. We've got so much happening down in the description. So go to that description. See me tonight. And let's farm some of the pests. So, yeah. Like, follow, comment, subscribe, guys. I can't really show you the build. The only reason I can't show you the build is because if I was to sail out, the only thing I can use on it is my side cannons. So if you want to see this build in full action, it's going to have to be tonight on the stream. So yeah, like, follow, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.